Hello, good morning. My name is William Del Roney. Most people call me Bill. Um, so my students call me Teacher Bill. Now, I haven't actually been teaching the last couple of years. Um, I have tutored and substitute taught in several schools and different districts. I have a different job right now to pay for the, the master's program. It's not cheap. Uh, this is my third class in the master's program and hope after I get the fourth be fully accepted into the master's program. I graduated from the University of South Florida with a bachelor's in teaching with a ESOL specialty. I moved to Busan, South Korea and taught there for two and a half years at Yongdo Middle School and Maritime University uh, as well as did a, uh, a group of classes at Yongdo Girls High School. Uh, I can't exactly remember its proper name but uh, Yongdo Middle School was uh, Yongdo Jun Hakyo and Maritime University is Hey Young Taeyakyo. I did learn a little bit of the language, not as much as I would like, but after leaving South Korea, I would end up in Shanghai for five years, where I taught in the public schools and after school programs, uh, teaching English as a second language. There was a little bit more interesting because I didn't just teach students, I also taught individuals that were brought there. Um, through a variety of resources to teach and I taught them how to reach the, the students. My specialty was six-year-olds to middle school. I mainly taught uh, six-year-olds to early teens uh, and like I said the public schools and the after-school program. The after-school program covered my passport and visa to stay in China. After Shanghai, I moved to Jujo to start up a new school uh, after, and an after school program in Jujo where I stayed for two years. And then after a little family pressure and my visa was, my passport was about to expire and wanting to get into the master's program, came back to the States because at the time, most of the master program classes I wanted to take were not available online. Now they're all online, uh, mainly care of COVID. I done some substituting and tutoring of students in different counties in the state of Florida, Ucaloosa, Hillsborough, and Pinellas. I had also did my internship for USF before I left for Korea uh, in Pinellas. Now it's for the text that's in the classes. Um, a lot of it was kind of dependent on how wealthy the school was and on how advanced the tech was. I do find that the average class classes in China and Korea, as well as Japan, are a little bit more advanced than some of the, a lot of the classes I got to substitute teach here in Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Ucaloosa County. Uh, activity boards, uh, trying to think what all the different technology that we utilize and the apps that we use to go with them. Most of them are kind of dependent on, on the books. Interestingly, um, there, even in the primary grades, teachers are taught was taught one subject. So even in uh, first grade, you had your math teacher, you had your science teacher, you had the language teacher of their primary, primary language and the English teacher that taught English. And they had their own little departments and they worked together. The students didn't leave the classes. The teachers would go to the different classrooms. The students would stay in one homeroom classroom. So it their lockers were in the classroom. They, depending on the schools, some students would eat in their classroom as well and then go out and have fun playtime. Others went to cafeterias. And the teachers would go to the teacher's lounge 
And like I said, it depends on the quality of the school from what type of food you're getting. But a lot of times it was buffet style, which was phenomenal. Again, to try a variety of different local dishes and try out different foods. But uh, I used a lot of PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft, Office. And then some of the programs I used were depending upon the textbook. And the reason I was trying to talk about the differences of the schools is not only did one teacher teach one subject all the way throughout the year, but uh, the head teacher would choose which textbook that school is going to use. Now the province, or we would might classify as a state, uh, would choose 10 textbooks and then they would send a copy of all 10 textbooks to each school and the lead teacher would go through the textbooks uh, with their group and go to the vice principal and say, uh, we want to, this is our first recommendation, the second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and the vice principal will then choose which ones that the, the, the head lead teacher chose for that subject matter. Some of the computer programs and tech that we use in apps also came with the textbooks. So some of the textbooks that we had had a great, different types of computer apps programs to utilize. And some of them were really good and some not so good. I even got to uh, pre-teach uh, some students that uh, a University of South Florida, um, say, was a special student that was sent to uh, Shanghai f for a special event. She went to go teach classes and she had taught in a special classroom. Well, all the students were being pre-taught by the, the company I was working for that went to her classroom. And she got all the bells and whistles and fancy toys. And I got to play with them once in a while. But uh, that was when the interactive boards are really becoming really popular across Asia. I haven't seen too many of those here in the US. Just whiteboards and, but uh, there, it's interesting when you're able to touch the board, make things move, rearrange, shift the words, and uh, like I said, it kind of depends on the textbook that you use. Now, Minecraft, um, I've seen it. My nephew showed me a few things of it. Never really utilized it. None of the schools I've been in have used it. There are gaming sites that we have used. Minecraft is way on the bottom list uh, of being used. I, when I first was introduced to it, me and my co-teachers were like, eh, that, we don't see the benefit. We see it, saw it as more of a distraction. Something for, we do... Some of the schools do have a list of games and stuff where the students during free time can play. And there was, and it's, East County has their own little list link to this one site that's for all of Florida. And they can pick the games that they want to play during free time. And most of that was for the special needs students uh, in the gifted program. So when it came to comes to Minecraft I personally don't like I've seen better apps and I started reading the textbook I did take a tech class when I first got back to the states uh, in a university in Ukaloosa and the, the tech class there I liked their textbook a whole lot better it was a little bit it was more attuned to primary, middle, and high school. This one seems to be talking more of the university levels and the apps and programs that they're using, like Moody. Because it's just so ha how I read the book so far. Chapters, I've read chapters one, two, five, read 10, just got done reading chapter 10 and looking to the next chapter that's in week two, start reading it. Well, again, my name is Bill. Nice to meet you. I uh, hope we uh, have a good learning session and we can learn more off of each other and maybe somebody can help me out with this Minecraft thing because I, 
I got lost in the third level. I collected a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to keep. I don't know what I'm supposed to get rid of. And should I go out into the big world and start building something? Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy it, the class.